Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today is an introductory level crochet video absolutely for beginners. I will be taking my time. We are going to be doing this half double crochet scarf in the rows. So I'm going to be presenting this as if you don't know how to crochet. So if you would like to fast forward now just go to the time markers in the video and you can be able to do that. Now this is the color challenge scarf. So each one of the colors here is a strategy and let's quickly talk about that and then we'll get into the learning how to crochet in a few moments. This scarf here was using the Karen Little Crafties and so there's 20 balls inside there. They're about the size of your hand these balls and they're really quite awesome. So instead of buying all the big balls of all the different colors so you can have so many colors it all comes in one package which is really quite ingenious if you ask me. So there's enough yarn here for you to be doing some crafts you know pom poms all that jazz but there's also enough yarn in here to do a beautiful scarf and the scarf can be up to 106 inches long. So it can be a super scarf or it can be a general size scarf of 76 inches um, if you're following my instruction today but of course if you change that starting count of the chain then it can be any size that you wish. So this is our strategy. So what I decided to do for this is that I reached in and I grabbed my color gold and then I asked my partner Daniel if he could help me do my colors because that's something that I struggle with and he goes just grab the color wheel and grab the color gold and I already did it. So he said just look across the color wheel and find the complementary color. So you can see if you did this color and you looked across the complementary is this. So the gold in the pattern here is what I chose and across the wheel is the complementary color of blue. So he says all you just need to do is reach into the bag and grab something else. So look at your collection that you may have at home and I just randomly grabbed purple. So when I looked at the purple here, here I can just follow it across and the complementary is green. So then I added the green. So you can see that every other yarn choice here is actually random but the other uh, colors in between are based on the color wheel and it actually works out. It was absolutely amazing and it was a great uh, lineup of colors. The only thing I did different in the pattern here is that I decided to use six strands for the fringe instead of four so it flares out quite nicely and also that you can change the pattern. So if you do 262 chains it'll be about 76 inches long that's without the fringe. If you don't want the fringe leave it off and then if you would like to really maximize the amount of yarn that you do have in that package if you chain 362 then you can have a scarf a uh, super scarf up to 106 inches long and still add your fringe if you decide to do that as well. We also have a tutorial on how to make your fringe absolutely perfect. It's been steamed and there's a video on that as well. So let's uh, begin to learn to crochet from scratch. So introducing your crochet hooks and what I would recommend is the cup for grip. Now the oils in my hands end up going into the grip itself so it's not technically dirty it's just been kind of <laughs> it's been discolored because I crochet a lot if you can imagine. I know running a crochet business who would have thought. So I recommend the comfort uh, grips here and versus these ones here that don't have the grip. If you are looking for a crochet hook though and it's something like this I would recommend that you get one that has the flat here. Now the flat allows your thumb to sit flat inside it. So so you always know the orientation. So if you rotate this and there's no flat spot you don't know where that um, hook is going to be. But as soon as you do this you always know the, the direction of which that hook is. So when you're looking at comfort grips anything like this, this has a flat edge. Same rule whenever my thumb is there I know the hook is pointing in the right direction in order to make that happen. And this is made by Yarn Inspirations. It's called Karen One Pound. It's a US made yarn here and it is literally a pound of yarn. So Yarn Inspirations makes other uh, great brands like Bernat, uh, Red Heart and all of those fun brands. And if you're ever looking at these labels there's a lot of information on these labels that you may not realize that's there. So if you're ever thinking about you wanna crochet with this and you wanna come up with a blanket or a scarf or whatever it tells you the recommended size. So in the Canada or the UK it's a five millimeter hook is recommended. If you're in the US it's an H slash uh, H slash eight. And so this other information 12 uh, single crochet by 13 rows that's the gauge. And so whenever you need to make up something like a hat they always provide the gauge on really good patterns. It's also a medium four. So you will find different sizes. You will find three, four, five. Uh, so one all the way, zero all the way to seven and this is just recommending because based on the thickness of the yarn here. And so this is a fuller ply worsted. It has washing instructions that you have and it also tells you how many yards you are. So when you're looking at patterns like on Ralvary they tell you how many yards that is roughly used. You can see 
this is the kind of information that you have. The next thing I want you to do is get the hook out of your hands. Let's lay your hands down flat on a table and watch. So I have videos that are right or left handed. So I'm going to show you the, the version that this one's been labeled as. So this hand here is going to be the yarn feeder and this hand will be the hook holder. So whenever I got my hook it'll be in this hand. This will be my feeding hand. In cramping it's usually the feeding hand at least for me is the one that will cramp versus the one holding the hook. I don't know why but I'm special. So putting your hands down like so and what I want you to do is that I want you to grab the strand and put it up over top of your yarn feeding hand like so. Now if you're wearing rings and stuff and you cannot close your hands. So when I close my hands I don't see any gaps. So if you're wearing rings it may actually force your fingers not to close. Also arthritis and finger um, you know I'm a big boy so um, I got a little bit of extra meat on my hands. But if you have any gaps in there you do need the attention there. So some people if they don't if their hands don't actually close they end up wrapping it around but you could get like rug burn on your fingers if you're not careful about doing that. So I'm going to put my hand down. This is my yarn feeding hand and I wanna separate out my fingers like this. And I want you to put the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball off camera here and I want you to just slip it and let it fall down between the pinky and the ring finger. And when I close this I should be able to pull this and there's tension. Okay, so I've been crocheting enough a lot so that you know I've got that in my back pocket really. So what I want you to do is that open, pull, close, pull. Do you see that? And so this is the tension so on what you're doing. The next thing I want you to do is that I want you to pretend that you're a flamenco dancer and you have those clappy things and I want you to use this finger right here and your thumb and clap together. Clap, 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 clap. Okay? So now if you wanna follow rhythm you can. So you're using these fingers most often in crochet and this finger is sometimes used when you're uh, trying to get orientation but most times it's like the Queen of England we like to have our finger in the air. So usually it's the, the pinky in this case it'll be the pointer finger that will be in the air when you go to do that. And the reason why we're doing that is that do you see what happens to this yarn? So I'm going to pinch at the back and if I lift up look see how it pulls that yarn back? It's that's tension. So I'm having control through my closing of my hand but if I lift this up I get more tension. And so it's the action of this finger and the closing of the back here that gives you the idea. And if you're using the flamenco dancer and pinch like this you can see that what you have is like a violin string right here and you can play that all day long. So if you want it loose lower your finger. You want it tight raise your finger. So lower, loose, higher, tighter. And so that's why you're moving your fingers all around when it comes to that. And if I want more yarn I just naturally just open this up just a little bit and then I'll be able to pull some yarn through and then if there's too much yarn then I will raise my finger, get the tension and if it's fine I will keep my finger down. So you'll notice in my videos sometimes my finger is down because I have enough tension on it and if I'm looser I will naturally raise my finger. You'll learn to do that in the future. So we are pinching and holding and this is what it is. So let's now begin and let's create a slip knot first. Crochet is a form of knot making. So the knot making basically is that you were creating a knot and then securing the knot. That's what crochet is. Knitting is that we're creating loops and we're building on loops and then we keep on building on loops. So what happens in, in knitting is that you keep building up loops and then you finish the project and all the loops get closed. In crochet we start a knot and we finish a knot each and every stitch. That's why it's easy to frog out and frogging means to rip it, rip it. Get it like a frog? Rip it, rip it. So that you'll see that there's frogging. So to create the starting knot so that it doesn't unravel from the very beginning it's called the slip knot. And I want you to point your finger like this and say you're gonna gossip about somebody that is just off to the side here. Take the other strand okay the, the end and wrap it around your finger twice. I'll show you three times. So this is the first time. Okay, so let it go. Point, gossip, 
say something nasty <laughs> and point and one more time and point. There are many ways to do a slip knot. This is my method and what I want you to do is just grab the strands together and using your three fingers hold. So just lay it down on your fingers, close your fingers and hold. Open and hold. There should be tension here. So now I want you to play the game of leapfrog. So the game of leapfrog, the frog jumps over the other frog. So this is the back frog and it needs to jump over this frog. So you're just gonna pick up the strand and you're gonna move it over top of the first frog but not over top of your finger and now you're just going to strategize and pick up the other frog and it's gonna jump and it's so excited it wants to jump over the finger like this and this here is your starting slip knot. So I'll show you again. So you're going to gossip about somebody and close your hands. You're gonna play the game of leapfrog. So the back frog is gonna jump over the first frog but and then the other frog is so excited it jumps over but it over jumps and goes right up over top of the finger. And this is the starting slip knot of crochet. One more time. So wrap, game of leapfrog. So excited it jumps over and there you go. So this knot when it goes onto your hook it can be changed in any size because it's based on what you just did. So taking your hook I want you to insert the hook from the front and just the yarn strand going to the ball just lightly pull on it and that will close it and put it nice there. So you should be able to slide it up and down the shaft and let's talk about the hook in more detail. So let's talk about the hook in more detail. This is the anatomy of the hook. Okay we have the head of the hook right here and then the inside here is called the throat right here and then we have the shaft right here. It's the shaft that determines the size of your stitches. So when you look at different crochet hooks you will see different sizes of shafts. So that's what changes in this. So the thicker the yarn that you have generally speaking the thicker the shaft that it is. And so usually the hook kind of follow, follows in line. This is called the molded crochet hook. You can see that the head of the hook is molded. There's ones that are called inline that are like sawn and they look like they've been sawed open and they're more sharper. I really like the molded ones versions better like that and I find them a lot easier to work with but that's something that you have to decide for yourself. So we have the head, we have the throat and then we have the shaft and this is the anatomy of a hook. So if your hook already has the slip knot if not just insert it from the front side and lay down your hand like this and insert the yarn between your pinky and your ring finger like this and flamenco dancer I want you to grab the knot that's right there okay just underneath the hook like a flamenco dancer. So using your idea of your flamenco dancer is holding the knot. The yarn is coming up over your hand down in between the pinky leading to the yarn ball. This is called as the chain. So we need to with this is that you're going to let your thumb rest within the rest spot here and you're going to just rotate it. Don't try to do that much action. Let the rotation of the hook here. It'll save your hands a lot of pressure in the, in the end and you won't get tired as fast. So this is called yarn over and I also call it row boating. So I want you to row your boat gently down the stream and pick up the hook. Now you're going to rotate it upside down and pull through. Let me show you why that is. If you look at the anatomy of this you will see it looks like an upside down teardrop. If you put your hook in the only way to get your hook out is to turn your hook upside down and pull out. If you don't turn that hook upside down it will snag in any way. So you're using this shaft to push up on it to give space for the head of your hook to come out. So as you're going in and you're doing your rowboat you have to norm automatically rotate your hook downward and pull through like that. And you're pulling enough so that it's the distance of the shaft. You'll get in time, get used to it. Let it go and use your flamenco dancer 
and grab onto the new section that you just did and consider and continue to row bulk or yarn over. So going underneath, scooping it, turning the hook and through. Okay, I'll talk it through one more time and then I'll just slowly do it. So scoop it, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and pull through. And pull through just enough that it looks like it's the same distance of the shaft. If it's being pulled like this, you'll just have to use your finger. See how I pulled that back? Just use your finger to get it to the same thickness. So I'll be quiet now and I'll demonstrate 10 in a row. and there was 10. Your chain should look relatively consistent but as a new crocheter I can guarantee you it will not look as good as this. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm perfect I'm just saying I got 35 years on you. So in time and I'm when I say in time it's not gonna be a long time. You'll see that your stitches will get more and more consistent. So chances are you will have uh, pieces that are really big and other pieces that are really tight. Again take your time. See how you can let go of the project so you don't have to hold this like you're just stressed out and trying to get it through. Just let the yarn glide like butter through your hook. In time you will be able to chain like this and then let it go and go up. Okay so it's a really quick process once you get moving. So let's talk about going uh, back across this for this particular project and what I'm going to demonstrate then is how to go across the first row of your scarf. So now that we understand how to do the chain we're going to start over now and now we're going to count the number of chains that we have to do. So just like we did before we're going to yoke or, or row boat or you're gonna do yarn over and the first one on there never counts as one. So the first one that we're about to pull through is one. So we just say one and two. Three, four, and five. Now this scarf has 262 chains. So you're gonna keep doing that until you get to 262. If you would like the super scarf version you can uh, chain 362. And if you would like a smaller version you can just chain enough that you think is enough for a scarf for yourself. But the nice thing about this pattern is that if you have 363 stitches or chains or you have like 275 chains it doesn't matter. This pattern doesn't have a multiple so every chain is essentially a stitch. So chain either 262 if you want the regular size scarf, 362 if you want the super scarf or chain as many or as little as you like in order to make your own size scarf. And when I come back I'll show you how to come across your chain. So let's do the first row across the scarf. So I'm gonna be teaching you single crochet and then the rest of the scarf is all half double crochet. Now when we have yarn like this the row of the height has to be grown like a ladder. So in this case because the starting chain is already started we don't start on the very first loop that you have there. We start on the second one in this particular case. So second loop from the hook or second chain from the hook it's called is right here. I'm pointing with my thumb. It's right there. So this is first loop. This is second. And what I want you to do is turn this upside down so that you see the back spine of that chain. And it's only one strand. So when you turn it over do you see them all now? It's like the reptile spine. So think about it like an alligator. And so when you look at it from this perspective it's the second loop and turn it over. And I want you to insert your hook into the back reptile spine like that. Ok. 
Okay, so just back spine once I've opened it it's easier to see. So you're just going in and you're gliding it and you're gliding it all the way to the shaft. So you gotta get it past that throat because the throat is a different thickness. Okay, I'll demonstrate again. So second chain on the back spine. And what you're going to do is that you're going to rowboat. Okay, so rowboat. So this is called yarn over. Sorry, this is yarn over. So just scoop it and pull through. I, I will demonstrate this several times. And now you got two loops left on your hook and you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down and pull through. Let's go to the next one. So do you see the next one is ready for you? It's standing up on its edge. Because you've got the first reptile spine, the second spine is ready to go. So you just insert into the spine. It's called the back loop of the chain. And then you're going to yarn over and pull through. And then yarning over and pull through two. I'll talk it one more time. So into the spine. Pull through. Yarn over and pull through two. So now I'm going to do the rest of the chains in silence and you can watch and I'll go nice and slow. So hopefully you're getting it by now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed up and get myself to the end of the chain. So please now just put me on pause and get yourself to the end of the chain and then meet me back here in just a moment. So I'm coming in my last chain and this is it. So see how it's finishing on the last one? So now you're ready to go on to your next row. But in fact we need to change our color first. And so I'll be demonstrating that in just a moment. Now that I've come all the way across I'm now just going to cut my yarn which I just did. So I just cut it and I'm going to pull that yarn strand through and that's going to lock that in. Now sometimes you can change the colors at the end of the rows and it will look pretty good. In my case I get paranoid if things fall out. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this onto a tapestry needle and I like the tapestry needles with the bent uh, tips on them. You'll find those in the craft section and also in the leather section of a craft store. So all you're just going to do is take this yarn and go down in between some stitches. Okay, so don't mess with the outside edge of a stitch. Just go right up underneath and push through. And when you pull through you're going to do it so it's taut but not change the shape. And now through a slightly different path you're gonna go back in the opposite direction from which you just came. And then you are going to then turn the, uh, the needle and come back finally in the other direction. Back and forth three times in a row will hide in your stitches or the ends so you'll never see them. And therefore you can safely cut it down to the project like that. Now this is the beginning strand. So you can do the same with the beginning strand. Get that out of your way now. Usually I do it at the end of a project but you can get rid of it at any time. 
by doing the same concept. So just going in underneath some stitch work. So how many do you do? You do once over and then twice and three times and therefore it's done and you can cut that out too. Just remember that's where you finished. So when you are finished here this is what we crocheted along. So when you're ready to start the next row just turn it and just lay it flat on a table and then we'll begin the next section. To have the absolute lock of a crochet project when you start the next row I recommend starting with a slip knot. You don't always have to and it's cleaner if you don't but I always do it anyway because that's just what I do. So we're going to create the slip knot like we talked about and so we're gonna play the game of leapfrog as we talked about and get that ready and put that onto your hook. Now you'll see on the tops are all the different stitches. So two strands equals a stitch. Okay, so when you're looking at it, so th the two strands when you go in equals a stitch. If you go into just one strand, the one that's closest to you, that's called the front loop and if you go into the other one that is away from you, that is the back loop. So in this particular case in this scarf we're going to start in our very first one right here and we're going to start off in the back loop only. This whole thing is working in the back loops which gives it the texture idea. So coming into the back loop only just stick in your hook and your yarn is already on the hook ready to go. Put this yarn into your hand. Hold for a second. So put it into your hand and just yarn over and scoop it through so that you end up with just that on there. So that went through that other loop that was already on the hook. So now it's locked in there. This is called um, attaching. I want you now to chain two, one and two. This never counts as a stitch in this pattern. So this chain that I just made is not a stitch. It's a, it's a builder. In the same back loop where this is joined I want you to do a half double crochet. To do that you're going to in, yarn over, okay row your boat and then going into the stitch where that other one is where you attached it and go out towards the back. The straggler just lay it down on top of the line so that it gets stuck up underneath. And then yarn, yarn over so row boat and pull through that stitch and now you have three loops on the hook and you're going to yarn over pull through all three and that is a half double crochet in the first stitch. So your next stitch, do you see it? Do you see it? I'm just holding for a second. So you're gonna row boat or yarn over and going into the next back loop and you're gonna go in. So this straggler that I have I'm only gonna go over about an inch or two and then I'm gonna cut it. So pull through then and then pull through three loops. And this is creating a ridge on the front side of the work here. So yarning over in the back loop. So I'm going to just say that I went over enough of the straggler. I'll get that out of the way so you can see better and yarning over and going into the back loop. So there should only be one strand. Okay, so normally in crochet you go through both but this is the back loop. So I'm just gonna go slowly and I'll be quiet at this time.
So hopefully you're making out okay. So I'm just filming this stretch. I may be going too fast for you but I'm just trying to film as many of them as I can so that you can see the concept and then do the rest on your own. Because eventually you have a lot longer chain than I do in order to go all the way down. So eventually you'll get all the way to the end of your chain. So just put me on hold now if you're not there and just restart me when you're ready and you're going to go into your last back loop. It's going to be the, the ending of the next row that is gonna be what's gonna throw you for a loop. So we're gonna go there and we're gonna end this yarn. So we wanna end it the same way that I showed you before. If you don't feel like weaving in your ends immediately you can just let it hold to the outside and then deal with it later. You can also do that or you can just deal with it right now. Get it off your to-do list and keep on plugging along. Again do not mess with the top edge. Just go up underneath some of the stitch work and how many are you gonna go? You're gonna go back and forth a total of three times. Now if you went over top of the straggler like I showed you at the very beginning of this row you will see it here. Just pull on it and you'll be able to cut it without having to use a tapestry needle. But of course you can use a tapestry needle if you wanna feel extra secure. So I finished here so I wanna start and you notice that it looks like it's off a bit. Don't worry about it. I don't have any more stitches left but now I need to pay attention doing the next row. So let's bring back a new color and let's show you the next row. So we're gonna bring back a new color. In my case it'll be the blue. So just do your slip knot, play your game of leapfrog and ready to go. Put it onto your hook. Now you wanna come to the last row that you just did. Again in the back loop only so looking straight down it's right here. And you're going to put this into your hands and you are going to pull through so that it attaches and then chain two. And in the same one that you did the attach you're going to half double crochet. So the chain two as I mentioned is not counted as a stitch. So working down the back loops only go over the straggler a few times about an inch or two and then you can push it out to the back side and get it out of your way. The trick to the end of this row plus all the remaining rows for your uh, of your scarf is in the last stitch. So in my particular one is that I always screw up the half double crochet and I always add an extra stitch. So in my case my scarf actually has an extra stitch. That's why there appears to be an angle. And so it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that it's wrong. <laughs> but it looked good. So it looks like it's an accidental um, mistake but in actual fact um, it was a mistake but it just it just worked out and looked good. But if you're doing like crochet tops or blankets then it's gonna be a problem. So just continue to half double crochet on the back loops going all the way down. So as I'm coming up to near to the end the problem with the, uh, the last one is that chain two does not count as a stitch. So it's easy to assume that it is counted and add it in which in this case it's not. So you won't have a square if it's not counted as a stitch and you're yet you're using it. So my very last stitch is actually technically next. It's right here. So you're going to see a little jet out and you're gonna think oh there's an extra stitch there. There's not. There's nothing there. And so you're going to cut your yarn and restart all over again. If you don't wanna cut your yarn then what you can do is just turn your work, chain two and again in the back loop only you know, the same of the same one you're just going to half double crochet. So the particular challenge scarf has you changing color every row but you don't have to if you don't want to. And there's yarns that change color on their own as well and will change when it's ready on the yarn ball. So you'll notice that the edging kind of doesn't look all the way perfect. That's just natural. So people think that's a mistake and then that's why they end up adding extra stitches. 
So I'm gonna go all the way down to the other side. So it's like coming up to the other side. So each one of these half double crochet rows are a separate row and it's the last stitch as I talked about. So the, there's only one stitch left. So this chain two does not count as anything and this is where you need to turn. So on my sample that I had I kept going into the chain two even though it wasn't counted. So it will look like this. So each one of these is a separate row. So you have one row, two, three and four. The scarf has a total of 17 of rows in order to make that happen and it has texture to it. So when you're happy with it just how I showed you how we're changing colors and we fasten off that's all you're gonna do so you just fasten off. And you can use your tapestry needle to finish it off and make it look really good. So what I wanna show you next is how to do the fringe that's on this scarf. And we'll put this aside and we'll do that next. So I'm gonna show you the basics of a fringe so you're gonna have a set amount of inches that you would like to do. And so in my case what I would like to do is that I want 20 inches. So I'm going to take a tape measure and lay it down in front here and say this is 20 inches. Then what I'm going to do is that once I get, I know this is 20 inches, I'm going to pinch and drag this and pull the other yarn through and that this is going to be the same distance. And I wanna do that a total of six times. So once I'm here I'm going to fold the yarn and then drag and then I'm going to fold the yarn and drag. You want it close to the fold but if it's not perfect you gotta cut it anyway and you wanna do that so that you get six of these. Now the pattern original only has four but in my case mine version has six. So all six strands have now been done. So it saves you having to lay down a tape measure and cut each one of them by themselves and what you can just do is just trim it. You are then going to take your project and you are going to grab this and fold this in half. Like this. So the longer the strands the longer the fringe. And I'm just gonna come in and I'm gonna say this is the good side. This is the side I would like people to see when I'm wearing it. So I'm gonna bring my hook on the outside here between the the chain two or the last stitch and I'm going to scoop this up and pull all of this through to the back side. And I'm pulling enough that I can get my fingers in this loop and I usually put two fingers in and I throw the whole section through like this. And all I'm just doing is gonna pull and you keep pulling. So by doing it from the uh, back to the uh, pulling from the back you end up with these lines going straight across because the other side it doesn't look like that. So this is considered the back side of the fringe. So what you're going to do along your edging is match your color. So the next time I want to do blue. So you just do a section of blue. So I'm just guessing my dimensions at this moment. So I'm just gonna take my blue, fold it in half and then I'll go to the next section and I'll come in from behind and I'll grab it and pull through. Just enough to get my fingers in and push through to the back side. And then I'm gonna just pull on it. Once I'm happy with this I can lay it down flat then and you can see I was a little more generous with the blue. So lay it down flat and usually what I would do is steam it. So I have a video in this article about, in the article on this and all I would just do then is once I'm happy with the dimensions I'm just gonna take my scissors and just cut all the way down the fringe. So the loops are automatically cut right out of the project. Like that. 
and therefore you'll end up with the same size fringe all the way down. And this is something that you can do but if you do fringe it or, or if you do steam it then you'll end up with really perfect fringe and this is a kind of a concept. So this is a beginner level scarf. Hopefully that you've enjoyed and learned a little bit today and uh, we have a lot more uh, beginner tutorials available on our channel if you wish and this is the challenge scarf. It's also called the long stripes crochet scarf because <laughs> of the stripes and it's long. Have a good day and we hope to see you again real soon. Bye bye.